So this video is going to be about the Ackermann steering geometry since I couldn't fit this topic in the previous video, the suspension geometry part 2 video. And I also wanted to give a quick update on the E55 project since a couple of people were asking about it. So the E55 was stored through the winter but I just got started on it again. I was installing an AEM FIC8. The project is still pretty much at the same point where I left it before, like the twin charge system was complete but I had to tune the car and increase the boost levels to get the most power out of it. So I'm installing an AEM FIC8 and after that I'll need to tune it. So hopefully the next video should be up by hopefully mid-April or end of April, so basically in a month from now. But anyways, getting back to the topic. So the purpose of the Ackermann steering geometry is that if you ever notice your car turning, let's say you're turning your car around a circle, you would notice that the front inside tire has to actually follow along a much smaller circle than your front outside tire. What this means is that you would need to turn your front inside tire more than your front outside tire for it to perfectly follow along that circle. So to make your front inside tire turn more than your front outside tire, you follow what's called the Ackermann steering geometry, which is basically just achieved by pointing your steering knuckle slightly inwards so that if you draw this yellow imaginary line that's passing through the steering axis and it intersects with the ball joint on your steering rod, this yellow line should go back and intersect. So if you draw two yellow lines, one on the left side and one on the right side, these two lines should go back and intersect at the point which is the center line of your rear tires. And if you follow this geometry, this would basically mean that when you turn your tires, your front inside tire will turn more than your front outside tire, and they will turn by the right amount so that your front inside tire can follow along the circle it should be following and your front outside tire can follow along that larger circle that it should be following. And in most production cars you will see a geometry really close to this because they want their tires to follow the path they should be following because if your tires are trying to follow two different circles, they would constantly be scrubbing when you're trying to turn your car. Now although almost every production car would follow the Ackermann string geometry, in racing you would often even see race cars going with a geometry opposite to this meaning turning the outside tire more than the inside tire which is called an anti-Ackermann. But to better explain that, first I want to explain slip angles because it will make a lot more sense after you understand slip angles. So slip angles are basically the difference between the direction your tires are pointing in and your car is actually going in. And what that basically means is that when you turn your tires, and especially when you're under high load, so when you're cornering your car at high speeds, uh, what this means is that your car doesn't actually go in the direction your tires are pointing in. So if your tires are pointing in a certain direction, your car actually goes in something less than that direction. And if you plot a graph of grip versus slip angle, it would look something like this. So you would notice that the grip would increase to a certain slip angle, and if you turn your tires more than that, the grip would start to fall off again. And the reason behind why tires need a certain slip angle, part of it is down to the deformation of the contact patch, because tires are just rubber. So when you turn them, the contact patch, because of the forces acting on it, it doesn't exactly point in the direction it should be pointing, and it points in something less than that. So you can see that at a certain point, your tires actually get to a maximum grip level, and if you turn your steering wheel more than that, or less than that, they won't provide their maximum grip level, they would be at something less than that. Now the other thing about slip angles is that whenever a tire is under higher load, you would need to put it at a greater slip angle to get the maximum possible grip out of it, as compared to a tire that's under low load, because you can imagine that whenever a tire is under higher load, it would deform the contact patch more. So basically that means that tires under higher load, you would need to turn them more than tires that are under low load to keep them at their optimum slip angles. And the reason why this is important in racing is because when you imagine a car going through a corner, it throws more weight to the outside tires. So the outside tires are under greater load and the inside tires are under lesser load. So according to the slip angles, that means that you would need a greater slip angle in your front outside tire and a lesser slip angle in your front inside tire to get the maximum possible grip out of both the outside tire and the inside tire. And just to put it in terms of how this goes with the Ackermann steering geometry, I've drawn this diagram over here where the blue lines are the lines that a perfect Ackermann steering geometry suggests your tires should be pointing in. So if they had no slip, that's the direction they should be pointing in. So the blue lines are tangent to the blue circles. And the yellow lines are after considering the slip angle of the tires. So the outside tires are at a greater slip angle and the inside tires are at a lesser slip angle. So now if you just look at the direction the two tires are pointing in, you can see that now you're pointing the tires more or less in the same direction. So you're pointing the tires parallel to each other, which is called a parallel steering. So it means turning both the tires by the same amount. And what this does is it helps you put your outside tires at a greater slip angle than your inside tires. And what this would mean in terms of uh, where your steering knuckles would point, it means that your steering knuckles should be pointing straight backwards. So if you draw these yellow imaginary lines passing through your steering axis and the ball joint on your steering rod, the yellow lines should be pointing straight backwards. But that previous example was assuming you were turning around a really sharp corner since the blue circles were really small. 
But now let's just imagine what would happen when your car is going around a really long sweeping corner. So basically a high speed corner. So in this example, the blue circles are really large. So if you imagine the same slip angles that we took in the previous example and apply it on this example, this time you'll see that you're actually turning your front outside tire more than your front inside tire to meet your proper slip angles. And that's exactly the opposite of what a normal steering Ackermann geometry suggests. Because according to a normal Ackermann geometry, you should be turning your inside tire more than your outside tire. But in this example, to meet your proper slip angles, you need to turn your outside tire more than your inside tire. Uh, that's why this geometry is called an anti Ackermann. It's the exact opposite of an Ackermann. And you'd find a geometry like this most commonly used on Formula One cars or Indy cars or most cars that race around high speed circuits. Because they need a geometry like this to optimize their grip around high speed circuits. So in terms of your steering knuckle angle, if you draw the yellow lines this time, the yellow lines would actually be pointing the opposite way. So rather than pointing towards the center of the car, they would be pointing away from the center of the car as they move towards the back. So basically the exact opposite of what you do in an Ackermann geometry. But this is something that you'll only find on cars that race on high speed circuits because this is something that will work well on long sweeping corners. But on sharp corners it would work really bad because when you turn your tires more, your tires would be pointing in completely different directions. Your front outside tire would turn way more and your front inside tire wouldn't turn much at all. Which is why it wouldn't provide the best grip in low speed corners. So that's the problem with these settings that they can only be optimized for certain corners. Which is why you'll see some racing teams they will actually change their suspension settings when they go from one track to the other. Now normally production cars would stay away from anything like this because they don't want their tires to be scrubbing every time you take a corner because that would be horrible on the streets. But generally in race cars, cars that are specific for the track and only spend their time on the track, you'll find geometries like this where they change the Ackerman in order to optimize your slip angles and get a bit more grip out of their cars. But anyways, that's everything for this video. The E55 videos should be coming up whenever I complete everything on the car. So hopefully in a month from now. But yeah, that's everything for now and thanks for watching.